Aaron Rodgers' weekly appearance on Pat McAfee later today, and you might be seeing this after he's already appeared with McAfee. As of this taping, it's not happened. That's must-see TV now. I don't expect Aaron Rodgers to say anything that will be all that earth-shattering. I don't expect him to be blunt and candid. But just what he says and how he says it could be revealing. Did he know this was coming? Was he asked for input before the decision was made? Or was he blindsided? Does he agree with the decision? Does it seem a little premature? Why now? And between A.J. Hawk and Pat McAfee, we'll see what kind of questions Rodgers gets. But this is prime real estate. For a guy to be pushed, and, you know, with a press conference, sometimes you don't get very deep down any path because the reporter's in there with that one question that his or her editor said you need to ask instead of meaningful follow-up. So we'll see. But there's a lot of different ways this could go. There's one way this should go. What did you know? When did you know it? What did you want? And are you happy with this outcome? And do you think it's going to be any better? Explain to us how firing Robert Sala and putting the defensive coordinator in charge of the team makes the team better. The defense is the strength of the team. Let the coordinator continue to coordinate the defense. Let Sala continue to coach the team. It just really makes no sense. But what makes it make sense is the fact that dysfunctional teams do dysfunctional things. It all comes back to Rodgers. It all comes back to the fact that they had to have him. And the problem was last year, four plays in, he's gone for the year. And this year, I've used this line a couple of times on PFT, he missed a year, but it's more like he fell asleep under a tree for 20. He looks old. He looks slow, and the injuries are piling up. It's not going to get any better. Swollen knee. Now he's got a sprained ankle. He can't play like he used to. And I think I said this yesterday because, look, yesterday was just a blur start to finish because the Sunday night game went to 1 o'clock. And I know, I know, we've got a great job. Hey, I've, I've been sleep deprived for worse jobs, so bear with me. My point is, I can't remember where and when I was saying this, but I am in favor of people taking chances. I'm in favor of people trying new things, reinventing, whatever. But sometimes you get to a point where it's like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done this. And I'm not saying he should walk away. I just wonder what he thinks about this. Maybe he would retire during the season. Maybe it's not too late to run for VP. I don't know. We got four weeks left. But if he didn't agree with this, and see, this is where common sense takes over. Would they have done this if Aaron Rodgers said, don't do it? That doesn't mean he said, do it. But if they came to him and said, Aaron, this is what we're thinking about doing. We just were curious what you think about this. If he says, don't do it, are they going to do it? If he just nods and says, I understand you have to run your team the way you see fit. That's essentially his approval. See, he's the one who's really in charge. They're tiptoeing around the delicate genius, and the worst thing they ever could have done was accept the $35 million pay cut he took last year. Those things are never free. That cemented the fact that after all those years of being told in Green Bay, you're a player. Players play, coaches coach, general managers generally manage, owners own, whatever, stay out of our business of creating the team. He comes to the Jets, and he's got say. He's got sway. And for all we know, hey, for all we know, they're getting ready to trade for Devontae Adams. And Sala said, I don't want to do it. And it became a sticking point. And so the end result was, you're out. Who knows? We've seen coaches get fired in the past when, for example, the owner wants the coach to fire a coordinator. And the coach says, I'm not going to do it. So the coach is out. There's a story to be told here. We're reacting to this fresh off the news that Robert Sala is out. And I believe that at this point I have said everything that I can possibly say about it for now. If something else big happens later today, we'll be back. At worst, on Wednesday morning, Michael Hawley and I will break down all angles of whatever we know and whatever we think we know about the Jets firing Robert Sala. But keep your ears out and your eyes open for what really happened. And maybe this Devontae Adams trade is coming because maybe, maybe 
The organization wants to do it. Sala didn't. Maybe Sala was saying exactly what I've been saying. What the hell are we going to do with Devontae Adams? We've got Garrett Wilson, Alan Lazard, and Mike Williams. I'm having a hard enough team time excuse me, maintaining this team as it is. We're going to throw this new personality in, and he's going to want the football, and that's really not going to change anything. So maybe that's the story. We don't know. All we know is Sala is out. Jets are dysfunctional. Blame it on Woody. Let's find out what the delicate genius thinks when he's on Pat McAfee later today. And as the news develops and as events warrant, you'll hear from us either here or tomorrow morning on PFT Live. Thanks for some of your time. Have a great day. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.